Hello everyone, Tom Morley here with the fourth video in the series for the Space Blasters 84 game. In this video we will be creating the parallax scrolling background so it's going to start looking like a game which is pretty cool. So let's open the project. Let's click on the 2D tab and let's create a root node for our background scene. And node is fine. Let's rename it to BG root and I'm going to scroll down here and get the full screen in here. Now we will be using the parallax background node so let's go ahead and load that up click new node and go down near the bottom uh, again, you've got the green area for control and canvas items, uh, the blue area for 2D, the, I guess, orange area for, with uh, 3D, and a little bit further down you've got some general item nodes, and one of those is a parallax background. So double click on that, load it up. Scrolling background for a shooter. I guess there's a million different ways you could go about um, creating movement. But basically what I'm looking for in this particular game is I want a layer of stars that can move from the top to the bottom and I want some nebulas kind of going from the top to the bottom. So the parallax background you can think of that as your mat layer, your the, the very back part of your scene. And in this particular case I want the very back to be just jet black. So what we need to do is we need to add a node to load up an image and there's a couple of different things you can use but just to keep things simple I'm going to be using sprites so make sure your parallax background is selected and we're going to add a sprite node click on the add new node and the sprites will be in the blue section and it's near the top there you go sprite now we're going to rename this because this is going to be the the very back part so we're just going to say background here alright so now we need to add a couple more layers right because this sprites going to be the very back layer but I want a layer that's ne a nebula so let's add that as well. So make sure your parallax background is selected. We're going to create a new node and this time it's not going to be a parallax background but we want to add a layer to that background. So we want parallax layer which is also in the blue 2D section near the bottom. Parallax layer. And again we need to be able to add an image to this layer so we're going to make sure parallax layer is highlighted and add an another sprite which again is in the 2d blue section and this will be our nebula we need to create one more layer for the stars right so make sure parallax background is highlighted click new node we want to create a new parallax layer and make sure that's highlighted and add a sprite to that. There you go. And this sprite will be for the stars. Okay, so now we've got things set up, but we need to actually put the images in these sprites, sprite nodes. So let's start with the sprite background. Um, before we do that, let's save this scene. Let's click on save and save scene and let's create a folder just BG folder for background and click OK. It puts us in that background folder and this scene is just going to be the BG or background scene so make sure we our background scene and click save okay so what I like to do is I like to put all of the materials that I use for a specific scene in the same folder 
we're just going to open a regular browser window. We will go to projects, space blasters 84, go to our source and our background. We'll highlight the three files that we have in our source file. We'll right click and copy those. I'm going to back up and go into our background folder that we created and put our scene in. And let's go ahead and create a new folder and let's just call this folder image to hold our images. Go in there. We're going to paste those images in there. Okay. So now we've got our background folder with our scene and the images from our source. We just pasted them in there so we can use them. So now we can go to the sprite again, click on texture here, click on load. We know we put it in the background folder under image and we want this to be the background which is just literally black. Now if you've used Godot before the behavior of where it loaded your images I believe was a little bit different. So there's a new setting here that basically loads your images centered on 0.0, .0 but we don't want that to be centered so we're going to find the um, area here to turn that off and it's right there so we'll turn that off that'll be that'll become important here in a second when we start trying to make things move so okay we've got the background done now let's click on the nebula and let's load that in the inspector section let's load our nebulas boom same thing let's turn centered off and again we're just layering these one over one over the other and do the same thing for the stars and turn center off. There you go. Okay, so there's different ways that these layers can behave and what we want to do, we want to pick the right mode down here for blending between the different layers. So really the only one we have to worry about is we're going to click on the stars and we want to change that from a blend mode of mix to a blend mode of add and you'll see things change here a little bit. Now the sprite nebula that's a little bit bright so what I think we can do is we can go to make sure the nebulas are highlighted and we can go to the opacity for that particular layer and let's knock it down a little bit let's knock it down to 0.7 and you'll see that um, it's not quite as uh, quite as dark. So let's uh, let's play that scene and see what it looks like. That looks uh, that looks pretty good. That looks okay to me. Good enough for now, anyways. But uh, as you saw, nothing's really happening. So we need to get these different layers to start moving. And the only way you're going to get that to happen is by creating scripts. So. The first thing we need to do is click on Parallax Background and we're going to create a new node script for the behavior. We'll click on the button to change our path because we want to put this script in our background folder and we're just going to call it BG for background. We'll click Create and that gives us the script to work with. We need to create a variable going to call this variable offset location or offset lock. It's going to equal zero at the start. We need to use the process function so we need to set that process function to true. We don't need any of this stuff, so we'll get rid of that. We need to create the function for the, for the process again. Process delta. And we get a lot of cool behaviors for free with the parallax background. So what we need to do is we need to take the offset location and just add some amount to it. So we'll grab the offset location variable. 
we'll say that it's going to equal the offset location variable plus some speed we'll we'll say 150 pixels times our delta so that will give us 150 pixels a second so the next thing we need to do is we need to call a function on the parallax background called set scroll location or it's not scroll location set scroll offset and that expects a vector 2 so we'll give it a vector 2 and we are going to be dealing in the Y axis only, right? Because we want the nebula and the stars to go from the top to the bottom. So the X will always be zero. And our Y is going to be the offset location variable we created. So let's put it in there. Oh, it's yelling at me because I didn't close it. There we go. So that should be all we need to get some motion. So let's go ahead and uh, let's play that and see what happens. And uh, we've got some motion. But what's happening is we have the stars and the nebula both going at the same speed. So how can I, well, one, how can I fix the fact that they're scrolling off the screen? Well, there's cool behavior of the parallax layers that allows us to mirror this image so that we can get an endless loop. So we'll do the, the nebula first just so that you can see that. Make sure that um, your parallax layer for your neb nebula is selected and where it says mirroring here, click on that. And we know that this particular image is uh, 1080 by 1920 so we want to put 1920 here and you'll see it actually creates a second picture down below the initial one and what that will do is that will make it so that it looks like it's an endless loop so we're gonna click play and see what it does and you'll see the stars we didn't mirror the stars, we just mirrored the nebula so that you see the uh, the nebula basically scrolling and uh, it will scroll forever. So we need to do the same thing for the stars. Uh, we'll hit the parallax layer 2 for the stars and again we need to mirror it. And our picture is 1920, so you'll see that it creates a an extended uh, or uh, an additional set of stars underneath it, and now we have exactly what we're looking for: is endless scrolling background of uh, stars and uh, the nebula. Now, what I'd like to do is I created separate layers for the stars and the nebula, so that I can have the stars move a little bit faster than the nebulas. And I guess how do I do that? Well, these parallax layers have this uh, another cool behavior to them above the mirroring called scale. So the scale relates to the motion that we defined in the parallax background. And if it's a value of 1, then it's going to be, we'll look at the script here, it's going to go 150 pixels a second. If we want it to go faster than that, then we just change the the one here in the scale of the Y to something a little bit larger. So let's do that. Let's look at the stars here. We'll, um, or not the stars, the parallax layer for the stars. And let's go to scale. And let's just bump that up to a one point, let's see how 1.3 looks. We'll press enter. Now when I press play, I expect to see the stars move a little bit faster than the nebula. And that's a little bit too fast for my taste. So I'm going to change that to maybe a 1.1. I just want the difference to be a slight difference. Okay. And that looks pretty good to me. 
and uh, that's it you're done that's how you create a scrolling parallax background in the good old game engine but now that we've created this why don't we just put the two scenes the uh, main scene and this uh, scrolling background and scene together and it's really easy so let's let's do that we'll close this we uh, will save it we'll open up the main scene so I backed up uh, one to go to the main folder and I'm going to double click on the main scene and if I click play it's still just the the main scene that we created in the last video we've got the info press enter it's running escape uh, game over but how do I get the scrolling background in to my main scene here well it's pretty easy all you need to do is click this positive icon here and it says create an instance of a scene file as a node so that's exactly what we want to do you hit that plus we'll go to the background we'll double click on the background scene and you see that it basically added it in there and um, we're done let's click play and see what happens so there you go that's how easy it is to um, put these scenes together so now we've got our our main scene and the background scrolling and you can hit enter and uh, the game starts running and your ship can fly around and if uh, you hit the escape key of course it's uh, game over so the the next step that's it for this the next step would be the HUD where we actually have some information when the game first starts up and when you hit the enter of course everything will go away and when you die um, we'll have a game over uh, some game over text here with maybe your high score and uh, a little more information so that's what's coming up next so I hope you learned something if you like these videos don't forget to click the like button and I'll see you in the next one